I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Ocala's information station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Nineteen minutes after ten o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this nice looking Thursday morning. Boy, last week at this time we were watching that news and we knew something not so good was coming our way. Now, after the fact, we're cleaning up. I know many of you are listening on your car radios or in your battery powered radios, and I know got a lot of people still in our listening audience without electricity, and we've been trying to recommend some good books for you to read. How about a good book for the children to read or for you to read with the children oh my gosh this is such a cute book i have a I, uh, a nephew and he and his wife were not able to have children of their own and so they adopted uh i think four children did they adopt four, four children and um it, it was a, a beautiful beautiful thing to witness to see the children like almost immediately call my nephew and his wife mom and dad it was just, it was just amazing and, and and i wonder what the psychology is behind an adoption, you know, from the child's perspective, from the friends of the children, you know, from the classmates, you know, who have um, uh, maybe biological parents in their family and adopted children don't. Um, this book kind of covers a lot of it, and it does it through the the storytelling of Dr. Jody A. Dean. She has written this beautiful children's book called Roxy the Doxy Finds Her Forever Home, and you might have guessed Doxy is a dachshund. Dachshund. I said it with that German accent. <laughs> uh, she's a clinical psychologist, Dr. Dean is, uh, specializing in children, adolescents, and athletes. Athletes? Athletes. Children, adolescents, and athletes. And she lives with Roxy. The do- oh, uh, Roxy's a real dog? Yes. Good morning, Dr. Jody A. Dean. Good morning, doctor. <laughs> Good morning, Larry. How are you? Roxy's a real dog. <laughs> she is a real dog. She oh absolutely my. is, and she went through this experience, so it's nonfiction. <laughs> <laughs> so all, all dogs are adopted, though, I guess, right? Except for the ones that live with their mom and dad in the woods somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being Where are you? Where are you calling from? I am calling in from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, this is a perfect time to talk about this subject because um, we have... We have so many people in our community that are transplants, and and may, maybe you know, and we have some retired people here who, for one reason or another, circumstances caused the the children either to not be here anymore. Maybe they died, and and the grandparents are raising the children. So it's, it's a little different than than adopting straight off the, the from the uh, like from the foster home or that kind of thing. But but I guess it's the same thing psychologically. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, any type of uh, change for a child is is challenging, mm-hmm. and um, whether it's, you know, adoption or where there's a situation like you mentioned, Larry, where the, the parents, for whatever reason, or the parent are, are not able to raise the child at that time, and they do um, place the child with the grandparents or with a relative, something like that. But any time that there's a, uh, a, you know, change, whether it's a blended family or step parenting, things like that, it's become so commonplace, though. Like you said, it, it's, there's all different kinds of family situations now, and whether it's adoption or blended family or living with a relative and things like that. Whereas, you know, probably 25, 30 years ago, I don't think we saw as much of it. Adoption was a little bit more... I don't know, Secret. secretive, yeah. a little yeah. bit like, well, what does that mean, and what happened, and a lot of lot of myths around the whole thing. The uh, the family story I told you uh, in those in that case, the children do not know their adoptive. I mean, their biological. I think one of them actually does. I think so. I think yeah. one of the children does. Yeah. Uh, but I have another niece who also adopted, and, she, and that that little child knows her real mom and her real her, I mean, When I say real, I should say biological. Yeah. Yeah, but they mm-hmm. they all get together uh, at at fa- family gatherings, and um, I, th- that's something I never heard of when I was when I was younger. Yeah, I think it was a. I think when it, it was when we, you know long years ago, I think it was very different. It, I think that it, usually the biological parent or parents stayed out of the scene. 
Um, but as adoption became more commonplace and the stigma began to fall away, I think making contact with the biological mom or the biological parents became you know, easier because we have the, um, the Internet and social media and also became more accepting. You know, there was a myth of, in the olden days that the biological mom uh, gave up the children or the child because she was unfit or a drug addict or crazy. That was not the case. That was not the case at all. And so now I, I do see it, too. I have a friend who adopted two children from the same biological mom a year apart, and they're all good friends. They get together. They see each other. Um, and so it's, it, it is you very – I don't think it would have seen that 25, 30 years ago, to your point. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, talk about dogs just for a second. In a dog's case, if you get the dog as a puppy – uh, this is kind of weird to say they don't know they're adopted but if, but if somebody else had the dog um, and then for one reason or another they moved the dog is like 5 or 6 years old the, the dog goes through that same it looks like through that same kind of transition as, as a child might go through Sure, and you know why we certainly, you know, we don't want to compare <laughs> like a what well, a dog goes through to a child because I don't want to send parents with no. adopted kids thinking that I'm, a, I'm comparing their kid to a dog. But absolutely, I mean, animals and dogs, they, they definitely need structure. They need predictability, just like kids do. Um, once they have bonded somewhere and they are used to the surroundings with dogs, they're used to the smells because dogs are, use their noses like we use our eyes. You know, they know what's outside. They know what's normal. Once they get used to it, to, to pick them up and change and, and make a completely different situation, it does. They definitely have to go through um, an adjustment period with the new at the new home. Yeah. It's like anybody else would, sure. And in addition to the story, you also have an adoption guide in the back with uh, real life questions and answers. Mm-hmm. So what I wanted to do with this is I wanted to make it a little bit different than just a regular kids book. There are a lot of great kids books out there, but I wanted to add something to this for uh, parents and as well as teachers because I've had a lot of teachers tell me, hey, we use that parent guide in our class. So what the parent teacher guide is, it's really just some questions um, that parents or teachers can walk through using the book as a tool for a child who perhaps is going to go through an adoption or a child who is uh, already at home and they will be bringing another child in to really help the child vet out their feelings and talk about how they feel about the situation that could be both exciting and scary at the same time, which is completely normal. And they can do this using Roxy as the character, which makes it for a younger kids not threatening. They can talk about how Roxy feels, and really they're saying what they feel, but it's not scary like it would be if they were talking about themselves and 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 i know we don't want to compare adopting a child to adopting a dog but i was was thinking of the the family that is the the um i guess the the definition of a nuclear family where the mom and the dad are together the children are are their biological children and Mm -hmm. those and those children have friends let's say at school or in the neighborhood who were adopted and the book i'm i'm thinking that if that family is reading this book they are looking at Roxy and saying, okay, so that's like Sally down the street. She was adopted. Is that, I mean, is this, do you think that's a helpful or useful or a healthy way uh, to explain to the, those children about adoption? You are spot on, Larry. I can tell you I've had a number of emails from parents whose child came home from school or whose child is a friend with somebody who's been adopted or they came home from school and they said hey we we have a new kid and the kid's adopted and and they kind of have that question mark over their head Mm -hmm. what does that mean and they've gone online and searched for a book about adoption and they've used this to show their child what adoption is when it foster and then finding their forever home and and what they went through and kind of what that means so you're absolutely right they people are using that to just explain um, in a nuclear family what a- adoption looks like and what that means. Yeah, and I imagine it's a lesson that sticks with them their whole lives, and, and maybe it even puts them at ease if, if they try to imagine themselves as parents one day, assuming that's what they want to be, that, um, you know, that there's, there's more than one way to, to have children. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great point. It really is. And it was funny. I had one one um, single dad. He's got a daughter, and he emailed me, and he said his daughter, who's five, he got her the book, and now she is determined that they should adopt a child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, really? Oh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, Roxy the Doxy finds her forever home. This is a cute, delightful book, and uh, I must not have gotten to the end because at the end I see pictures of the real Roxy. I didn't have any idea that they were in here. Um, I have a copy of the book. If you want this, call me. I will be glad to leave it for you, and, and uh, you can come pick it up. The rest of us have to go buy it. By the way, it's getting great reviews on Amazon. Um, so that's a, that's kind of a telltale. 17 people gave it five stars. That's pretty good. Can't beat that. Um, do you have a website you want to tell us about? Sure, Larry. Thanks. Um, the website where you can find more information about adoption, read some of the blogs, read some of the stories that are real life about people who have adopted, is www.tallyhopublishing.com. That's tallyho, T-A-L-L-Y-H-O, publishing.com. Okay, tallyhopublishing.com. All right, maybe you can write a book called Roxy Survives a Hurricane. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be neat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that would visual be fun. That. that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> that will be fun. <laughs> that, yeah, that would be useful for the kids, too. Don't worry, kids, there's a hurricane coming, but remember what happened to Roxy. Yeah. <laughs> got, a, got a cookie in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for giving us something uh, interesting and fun to talk to, talk to about. Doctor, uh, talk about, I'm sorry, Dr. Jody Dean. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. We will be right back. Here is your 30-second news brief. Hurricane Irma has been blamed for two deaths in Marion County. Both were vehicle-related and occurred at intersections without working traffic lights. President Trump will visit Florida.